In the relatively short history of aviation, there have been many mysterious stories such as encountering Foo Fighters during World War II, pilots observing or even chasing UFOs, ghost planes and a pilot experiencing a time slip. But none has been more baffling than the ghost of Flight 401. In December of 1972, an Eastern Airlines TriStar jetliner, Flight 401, crashed into a Florida swamp. The pilots, Bob Loft and flight engineer Dom Repo, were two of the 101 people who perished in the air crash. Not long after the crash, solid apparitions of Loft and Repo were seen on more than 20 occasions by crew members on other Eastern TriStars, especially those planes which had been fitted with parts salvaged from the Flight 401 wreckage. The apparitions of Loft and Repo were invariably described as being extremely lifelike. They were not only reported by people who had known Loft and Repo, but the ghosts were subsequently identified from photographs by people who had not known Loft and Repo. Many of the testimonies are extremely persuasive and come from people in highly responsible positions, pilots, flight officers, even a vice president of Eastern Airlines who allegedly spoke with a captain he assumed was in charge of the flight before recognising him as the late Bob Loft. Other sightings are convincing because they have multiple witnesses. A flight captain and two flight attendants claim to have seen and spoken to Loft before takeoff and watched him vanish. An experience that left them so shaken they cancelled their flight. The following are amazing testimonies told by crew members who witnessed the following. I was on Flight 318, which had parts utilised from Flight 401, and was in the lower galley of the jumbo jet, and I just happened to glance at one of the ovens, and saw the reflection of the flight engineer that had lost his life in the Everglades crash. I then went topside to get into the stewardess to verify what I was looking at, and she too saw his reflection. We then got the flight engineer to check, and he not only saw the vision, but actually spoke to it, whereupon it warned of a fire on the plane. Shortly after, when Flight 318 was above Mexico City, a fire broke out in one of the engines, causing it to be shut down, and the plane landed safely. Flight attendant Ginny Packard was in the galley waiting at the elevator ready to send food up, and as it was peak period, the elevator would take an eternity to arrive. Suddenly, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a cloud-like formation, which was definitely not condensation or smoke. It was initially the size of a grapefruit, but as she pressed the elevator button, she looked again and found that it had grown to the size of a basketball, and began to get more thicker and solid, and was slowly getting larger. At this stage, she started to panic, and the elevator was taking forever. It then started to form into a face, half solid, half misty. As the elevator arrived, it was now a complete face with dark hair, grey at the sides, and was now a three-dimensional image. Senior stewardess Sis Patterson was on flight 318 in New Jersey preparing for a turnaround flight back to Miami. She was making a routine headcount and found that they were up by one passenger. She was soon able to locate the discrepancy when she saw an Eastern Airlines captain in uniform in one of the seats, and assumed he was deadheading back and bringing another plane to Newark. To confirm this, she approached the captain to verify this, and she said, excuse me captain, you do not appear to be on my list. The captain did not respond and stared straight ahead. She repeated her request for verification, but the captain would still not respond and continued to stare ahead. She was then joined by flight supervisor Diane Boyce, who was equally puzzled. The captain looked normal, but appeared in a daze. The flight captain then joined them, equally perplexed. It turned out there was no record of this man listed, and he had no pass for the flight. As the flight captain leaned in closer to address the captain, he froze in fear and screamed, My God, it's Bob Loft, the dead pilot from Flight 401. Then something happened that no one in the vicinity could explain. The captain in the seat suddenly wasn't there.
Marriott caterers were loading goods onto Flight 318 when the flight attendants observed the sudden commotion where the catering crew immediately left the plane and refused to go back. They said they saw a flight engineer standing in the galley but then instantly disappeared before their eyes. There was a long delay before they could complete the loading. Flight engineer was doing a pre-flight inspection and saw a man in uniform sitting in his seat at the panel. The engineer identified the man as Don Repo. Then the apparition of Repo said, you don't need to worry about the pre-flight, I've already done it. Then the three-dimensional figure of Repo suddenly vanished. A female passenger was in the first class section of flight 318 from New York to Miami and was seated next to an officer in the uniform of a flight engineer. The woman said the officer looked sick and pale and just staring ahead and when she spoke to him he did not respond. She repeated her question but again there was no response. The woman called over the stewardess who agreed that the flight officer did not look well. The stewardess herself asked whether she could be of assistance and at this stage other passengers were observing them. Then in front of the whole group the flight engineer simply disappeared. The women at this stage became hysterical and on arriving at Miami demanded to be shown pictures of all Eastern flight engineers in order to identify who the man was and both her and the stewardess picked out the photo. It was Don Repo, the officer who had been seated next to her. Flight L1011 was approaching Phoenix where a woman had been sitting quietly and undisturbed when suddenly she started screaming saying that a man had suddenly appeared in a seat next to her. She said that she'd been looking directly at the seat and that the man had not walked up but had suddenly appeared out of thin air. Then he disappeared the minute she started screaming. The cabin crew could not console her and had to call the police whereas the woman was so hysterical they had to take her out in a straitjacket. Apparently Repo and Lof were not content to make ghostly appearances on the aeroplanes. At times they were hands-on. There is a testimony from a flight attendant who observed a man in a flight engineer's uniform whom she later recognised as Repo fixing a galley oven. The plane's own flight engineer insisted that he had not fixed the oven and that there had not been another engineer on board. Repo's apparition was also seen in the compartment below the cockpit by a flight engineer where he appeared to be inspecting something. Apparently Don Repo had a great sense of humour so we wonder whether he enjoyed scaring people as well as warning them of impending accidents. Maybe he wanted to show us that there is life after death. I could find no information on how long he haunted the planes or whether he still makes the occasional appearance. I imagine that most employers would keep quiet if they witnessed any apparitions for fear of losing their jobs. If this story intrigues you, there is a book about the incident called The Ghost of Flight 401 by John G. Fuller. Link is in the description.